Not too long ago, I rescued this abandoned end table from a dumpster. And now we're going to breathe some new life into it. Without further ado, let's take a better look at its condition. Starting from the bottom, it's uh, it's not looking too bad. Uh, it actually uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, oh, oh, it looks terrible. This looks like some kind of an epoxy. We're definitely going to get rid of that. There's also all kinds of weird hieroglyphics written all over this thing. I don't know what any of this means, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. Let's get this thing outside so we can start sanding all this crap off. Let me get my respirator my roommate's handy dandy electric sander, and some pretty high grit sandpaper. Obviously the electric sander needs some electricity, so if I could just get this thing plugged in, bam, there we go. Now I really wanted to take my time sanding the surface of this because I didn't want to cause any pitting. Pitting is when you focus the sander too much at one spot and then it ends up creating like a valley and then the tabletop's not gonna sit level. So I really wanted to make sure I didn't do that. After we get the top looking how we want, I'm going to flip this thing upside down. And we're going to go ahead and remove some of these paper hieroglyphics from the bottom. That first one came off real easy, so I bet you this one's going to come off real, come off real easy. Gotta, just got to get my fingernail on it and just get the corner of it up and then, oh, there we go. Real easy. Next, I got to remove these legs because two of them are already real wobbly. And I thought it would be easier just to sand the leg while it was disconnected because I didn't want to cause any pitting where the leg met the bottom of the table. And after wiggling it like a loose baby tooth, we're going to go ahead and pop it out of its socket. You can see it was really hard to remove because the original manufacturer used nails to keep it together. After all that wiggling, we got one, two, three, four loose table legs. And now it's finally time to sand the original finish off each one of these bad boys. I had to make sure I paid close attention to how much time I spent on each side of these legs. I knew that if I hung around in one spot for too long, it would actually remove the roundness from the round leg. So I had to treat it kind of like a rotisserie chicken and make sure I took my time and rotated really slowly. And after a little bit of hard work, we got a nice round blank canvas. And you know, actually we've got about one, two, three, four round blank canvases. After all that sanding, let's get a breath of fresh air and take a look at our semi-finished product here. I think it came out pretty good. You could see a lot of uh, little spots where moisture kind of got soaked into the wood, but uh, I'd say we're getting pretty close to giving this thing a brand new color. And I'm really trying to get this done over the weekend, so let's just move on to the next step. And that next step requires me to sit down on my computer. I've got a pretty spontaneous idea for how I want the top of this table to look. So no more dilly-dallying, let's pop this laptop open, and crack open Adobe Illustrator. Huh. See what I did there? No? Alright, let's move on. The first step is obviously to open up a new file. And I typically just go with whatever the default workspace is, because you can work in and outside of the white canvas. I'm just going to select my trusty manual brush tool and let my hand move and flow like loose water, just spinning and moving around and letting my hand do whatever it wants. I really want this shape to be completely organic. And ha, huh, look at that. We met perfectly at the end. Whew, man, that was a that was a lot of work. I let my hand be all organic and stuff like that. And let's see what my hand came up with. Oh, cool. It's like a drop of water or like a Nickelodeon slime. And wow, look at that epic transition onto that piece of plywood that I definitely didn't get from a dumpster too. So now we're on to the second day, and uh, like I mentioned, I really want to get this done over the weekend. So after slamming an energy drink, I'm going to let the caffeine do all the talking, and we're going to start cutting this thing out of the plywood. And this is real time. I was actually moving this quickly. This is certainly not sped up ten times, and I am definitely not rambling because this part took a while. As you just saw though, we just removed our first section of wood, and it felt really good. And now we're creeping up on the second, and it is very satisfying to watch how this just falls apart. It's like a very tender brisket. Mm. I could definitely go for a really tender brisket right now. But uh, let's stop thinking about food, and uh, let's get this next section taken off. Now, in all seriousness, using a jigsaw can be a pain in the butt. It can jam up a lot and leave black burn marks, but you just have to take your time. And now that the adrenaline is wearing off from the energy drink, let's do the final reveal. Ooh. Oh, tender brisket, that came out so good. Man, I am so excited about how this shape came out. Always hold your projects up like you won a Grammy or a Nobel Peace Prize, and then just drop it down and slap it like it has no value so you can move on to the next step. We've been using this sander quite a bit, so I want to make sure I caress it to make sure that it knows it's special before I use it to aggressively clean up the edges on this spontaneous tabletop. As you can see, I took a chip off one of the edges there. It was extremely difficult to sand all the edges down real evenly and smoothly just because of the nature of the shape. 
The sander was not really easily maneuverable, but uh, I think we got a pretty good final result here. It's definitely soft to the touch and resembles a splat or a drop of water in my opinion. As you can see, the bottom side here is marked so that I know how to line the table up with the exact center of the tabletop. And now it's finally time to permanently adhere this new top to this old bottom. Let's grab our Gorilla Wood Glue and get ready to start pouring it all over the top of this table. I uh, really didn't have a plan for this, I just thought I would get as much coverage as I possibly could. And you can tell that I didn't really do a good job with just a squeeze bottle alone, so I'm going to need some gloves. Going to get them on my hands real tight because I really don't like cleaning wood glue off my fingers. And we're going to smear it around like it's a lotion. We're going to put the lotion all over the wood. Get it in there. Dry skin. The wood's got really dry skin. We're going to get it all over the wood until the wood feels nice and moisturized. And then we're going to take our brand new tabletop. And we're going to place it on there, and then we're going to take a look and realize that it's not perfectly centered, and we're going to spin it around a bunch and make kind of a mess on the bottom. Um, but that's just kind of all par for the course. So you're going to see me Sonic the Hedgehog around this thing to try and line it up perfectly. And after a little while, I get it to a spot that I think looks good. Now, obviously, you need a handle on a drawer to be able to pull the drawer in and out. I chose this funky shape from the Hobby Lobby down the street, but I had to change it in the end. Now it's time to put this thing back in the garage and pick a stain color. I'm not really going to do a lot of picking here, I just chose the last stain that I used for a different project I was doing. Now we're just going to pry the lid off with this flathead screwdriver. Now we're going to take this foam brush and we're going to dip it really lightly into the stain. And then we're just going to lightly drag it across the wood. I'm not painting it on, I'm not smearing it, I'm just lightly dragging it. And then we're going to use a towel to wipe all the loose stain off. I was about 90% done with the top before I got a drop onto the front of the drawer. And the issue is if you let this stain sit for too long and then you go over it with a different coat, you'll actually see the spot will be darker than the rest of the finish. So I quickly wanted to get this done to avoid that issue. I quickly want to reiterate that I have basically absolutely no real idea what I'm doing. I've just played with stains a lot and wood and all types of stuff, so I have like a general idea but I am not a professional woodworker. I just like to make stuff. After avoiding that ordeal, we could put the drawer back in and go in to grab our clear gloss polyurethane. And again, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pop this cap off. And I wanna pause right here because I want you to understand that the way I'm doing this is not the right way to do it. You're supposed to thin the polyurethane before you just go pouring it and gooping it all over your project. So just know, again, I'm not a professional. This was just the cheapest way that I thought to do this. But anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and goop this polyurethane all over the top of it. And I'm gonna commit another cardinal sin here and I'm gonna use a foam brush to spread it out. Uh, this doesn't always work all that well, but uh, for this instance, I think that it did just fine. Usually you don't wanna use a foam brush like this because it leaves a lot of streaks in the polyurethane. And you can also create a lot of air bubbles and then you have to go back and get rid of those air bubbles and that's something that I did have to do. But again, I was trying to accomplish this in a weekend, the cheapest way possible, and I just have a surplus of these foam brushes from other art projects that I have done. So I'm not really gonna be losing any sleep over this. As you can see, it's still pretty satisfying to watch me wipe this on. And as long as you don't get too close to the finish, you really won't even notice a difference. So finally, here we are. The finished product. Huh, looks all right. Let's get a closer look at this thing. Now, even though I really didn't do the polyurethane exactly how you're supposed to do it, and you can see some streaking on top, I'm still a huge fan of the final product. If I could go back and plan this out a little bit better, I would have selected a nicer quality wood for the top. I wouldn't use plywood that I found in the dumpster, but in the end, I think it all meshed pretty well. It looks just about how I pictured it in my head, and it's just as functional as you would think. You could put a lamp on it, you could put a flamingo pole dancing on that lamp, or some flowers, or a limited edition Halo 3 Xbox 360 controller. And you can store a bunch of stuff in the drawer, like uh, uh, this uh, pure baking soda and a uh, pair of safety goggles. Or, oh, well, there we go, a TV remote. That seems a little more uh, expected. In the end, I think the table came out pretty good for something that I only spent a weekend on. I got the plywood for free from the dumpster, the table for free from the dumpster, and I really only had to use resources that I already had saved up from past projects. So, all in all, I think it came out pretty good. Let's see if we can get the Billy seal of approval on this thing. Huh? Huh? Okay, okay, well, it was worth a shot. To wrap this up, 
If you enjoy stuff like this, where I just kind of make random stuff and do whatever I want, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been taking a break from the Camboy and Kirk stuff for a while. I've had some pretty significantly traumatic events happen in my life in the past couple of weeks. I lost one of my friends, Liam, to mental health struggles, and my sister got into a really bad car accident recently, so I've been just trying to do things that make me happy. I'm gonna go ahead and dedicate this project and uh, this video to my friend Liam and my sister Felicity. In the meantime, tell your friends and family you love them, and try and do some things that make you happy. I hope life treats all of you well, and thanks for watching my video. I love you guys. Peace.